this is going to probably sound like a silly question, but I've talked to a lot of people, and when I talk to them, they say, how do you know that's the Word of God? And, and I say, I, I know it's the Word of God. But it seems like through history, um, when you go back to Moody and Spurgeon and Torrey and all these guys, there were great revivals, and they used a King James Bible at the point. <clears throat> but during that period, I think the world was probably one of the most least educated places. And it seems like we're getting more and more educated today, but we keep trying to make the Bible simpler for people to understand, but it seems like we're getting less results. So I guess my, my question is, is the New International, the American Standard, the King James, the New King James, wh which is the most accurate? Rob, are you trying to be controversial? <laughs> Not at all. What kind of Bible do you have in your hand there? I have a King James. Okay. Just but to, I'm not trying to be controversial. Oh, good. No, I, I wouldn't. I was just, I don't think you would be because I know you and I've talked to you so much. But uh, I've, I have talked about this in different ways many times, but I would love to talk about it again. The question is, well, there was, that was a whole bunch of questions. Uh, one is you talk about Moody and the, the revival period and, and that time and uh, the King James Bible in, in relation to that. Now we're looking at all the modern translations, but we're only talking about the English-speaking world, by the way, um, which is a whole nother dimension because, like when I speak overseas, I always have to talk with my interpreter because, for example, in Russia, they use, the, they use a, a different um, underlying manuscript family that the verse numbers are different. You remember I told you that, and, and this is just, and I'll answer Rob's real quickly. By the way, yes. There, that's a short answer. Yes, it is important. Um, the the um, chapters were introduced in the 1200s, the chapters in the Bible. There were not chapters in the Bible before the 1200s. And uh, Bishop Langton, the Archbishop of, uh, um, well, the from the, the Church of England, which became uh, Anglican. But Langton put those in in the 1200s. And then uh, SDN, I don't know how you spell it, but he put the verses in in uh, the 16th century, the 1500s, um, 16th century. So that's the verses. So first of all, the Bible has gone through a lot. It, it used to be uh, all words with no chapter and no verse divisions. Uh, in fact, there are two kinds of manuscripts uh, before I answer this, and there's uncials and minuscules. Uh, uncials is all caps, and minuscules, uh, now this is being, I'm, I'm very general here, uh, but, but all caps run together. So if you have a page of manuscript, it's just like this. The, the letters are just like this. And the translators have to go like this and say, there's a word, there's a word. Not sure what that is, there's a word. You understand that the Bible was written in Hebrew and Ugaritic and, and, and all in the Old Testament and in, in Greek in the New Testament. And and so it comes from, the New Testament actually comes from 25,000 plus fragments, fragmentary manuscripts. Um, in fact, there is not one complete manuscript of the Bible that predates the fourth century of the New Testament. Um, because Diocletian, if you ever, I mean, I love history. Remember, I was a history major. I could wear you out all night. Diocletian destroyed every church building that the church was meeting in, killed every pastor, and destroyed every complete manuscript of the Bible. He was the emperor, by the way, of the Roman Empire. Destroyed every complete manuscript. That was his accomplishment in 10 years. One of the greatest, deepest, worst persecutions to church. He came closest to exterminating the church. He was an engineer. Uh, he's the only Roman emperor that resigned and went to garden. I mean, he accomplished everything he wanted to and he quit. Um, but 
what happened here in the 300s, the fourth century is the 300s, um, all the manuscripts were cut in pieces to preserve them. And people, it's what I experienced when I was in Eastern Europe. I would go to churches in the 70s to deliver Bibles to people who only had a page. Because of the communists, they would, if they had a whole Bible, they'd tear it all up and pass the pages out there. But if the police came to one house, they only got one page. They'd have to go to 1,200 houses to get the whole Bible because there are 1,200 pages in, you know, that edition of the Bible. So that's what happened back here. So the, there is no complete manuscript before the 4th century. But we have 25,000 pieces. And so what they've done is they have... And, and this will get back to Rob's question. They have taken all 25,000 of the manuscripts and put them in sorting. And they did this in the, in the 18th century. Uh, well, they did it after the, the Reformation, or Renaissance time, they started finding all these manuscripts. In the Reformation time, they started, you know, codifying them. And by the time of uh, Britain scholarship in the, in the 18th and 19th century, they found out that there are two families of manuscripts, Eastern manuscripts, Western manuscripts. Western manuscripts primarily were associated with the church in Rome. Uh, they're primarily uh, European, and they're called Byzantine manuscripts. They're also called the majority text. In fact, uh, if you look at the 25,000, the vast majority of all of the manuscripts uh, are from this family. This side was associated with the Eastern Church, which would be uh, like Syria and Egypt, not Rome. Uh, they, were, they were, you know, Middle Eastern, not European. Uh, they're, they are called the minority text. Um, there are fewer of them. They are older, by the way, most of them. They have fewer words. In fact, if you've ever done a search in any computerized Bible between these versions, what you'll find is that this version, this version, and this version, these are minority text. These are Eastern uh, this, is, this is the critical text, uh, Eastern text, um, minority text here. It has fewer words. These are called the majority text, King James, New King James, uh, and others. And they're the Western text. And so is there a, a, a big difference between them? There's a lot of differences between them. For one thing, these two uh, came from what's called the, the Textus Receptus, if you've ever heard of the received text, the Textus Receptus, which Erasmus uh, helped put together. He was a great um, humanist scholar. And when he put it together, there were no complete copies, especially of Revelation. So he actually went to the Latin Vulgate, which was made in the 4th century, and translated words from Latin into Greek to fill in the text. So that's why there's, there's a lot of uh, interesting history behind how we got all of our versions. But I will, I will uh, just say this, um, because this is, this, we could spend hours on this. The New Testament is all we're talking about, not the Old Testament. The Old Testament, there's almost no disagreement on any word in it because the Hebrew was numbered and, and the scholar or the copyist would, would count every letter, put a numeric value at the end of the line, put a, a value to it, and at the end of their time copying, they would tabulate it up. If it didn't come out accurate, they'd burn it and start over again. They were very fastidious. In the New Testament, basically the text of our New Testament numbers about 250 pages like this of Greek text. If you take all the New Testament, it would be 250 uh, little pages of Greek text like this. If you take all of those 250 pages, and this is the bottom line, and I don't know why there's so much controversy over this. Um, if you take all 250 pages and put all of the differences between the... Uh, between the minority and the majority, if, if you tabulated all the differences, 
it's only one half of one page difference. But in all 250, between the New International, the New American, the English Standard, and the New King James and the King James. One half of one of the 250 pages. And in that, there is not one doctrine that is imperiled. In fact, if you take, if, if you take the minority view, you say, none of those things, we don't want them, we're just going to go with less. And there's not one doctrine that's missing if you X out. This is the King James here, and this is the NIV. Minority, if you take the lesser, the shorter, the older, the, the critical scholarly one, you only are losing a half of a page, and there's not one doctrine. Most of them are spellings, uh, like you saw it tonight in Russ's presentation. Did you, as he read the four U's, if you were in a New King James uh, or King James, it, it was our, our, only two U's, not four. Because the difference between those two, between you and us, is just one S. It's just the letter sigma. Very small. Many of the other differences are between omicron and theta. See the difference? Omicron, theta. It's just a right there. And a little sigma on the end. So that's what's made up of this. But here, here to answer Rob's question. Why do I personally study all of them um, New American has the finest Greek rendering. Uh, NIV has the finest Hebrew poetry. Um, finest New Testament Greek is the New American. And the ESV has the finest blend of both. But why would I persist personally for all these years to use the new King James. Simply this, and I thought about it this, this morning because I was at Gull Lake and a missionary shared there and made a heavy point from their New International and said, for years I thought, I thought this verse was in the Bible and I found it's not in the Bible when I got my NIV. And I thought, why would I persist in this? Because I'm a pastor. And if you take the sermons... Like, I read verses. I just, I, every time I preach, I just stand up and I read. Did you know if you take the collected sermons of the pastors from the 2nd, 3rd, and 4th centuries, and if you look at all the verses they quote in their sermons, what you find is that about 79% of all the first three centuries of preaching to churches comes from the Western text. Only about 20 point something percent, roughly 21 percent, of those earliest pastors quoted the Greek text of the Eastern. Do you know why? This is where Arianism came from. This is where Nestorianism came from. This is where Eutychianism, all the great church heresies started in the East not in the West, with Rome. That's why Rome became the papacy. That's why the Pope ascended, because the Roman Church always came out on the right side of every doctrinal controversy, and they defended the truth. In fact, even to this day, Roman Catholicism is about 98% Orthodox. Their doctrine, They're, they believe in the Trinity, they believe in inspiration, they believe in the deity of Christ, and the virgin birth, and on and on it goes. They've only added the deadliness of works religion. So the reason why there are two manuscript families is these were in the Middle East. And if you know anything about the Middle East, it's desert. And if you have a manuscript in the desert and stick it in the sand, it will stay. In fact, today in Egypt, when they excavate, they're coming up with rubbish from the time of the pharaohs. And there are receipts people had from transactions that are still in the, in the sand. They haven't rotted because there's no water. But if you have a manuscript in Europe in a moldy, damp, stone castle 
with mice and everything else, it's gone. So the reason these manuscripts aren't as old is they, had to be, they were worn out and had to be recopied so many times. These are older, but this side had more negative bad doctrine. This side had far more positive doctrine. So for me, just as a personal preference, I like the New King James because I agree with what the pastors preached from the first three centuries after the apostles. This is still true. It's only a half of a page difference. I don't mean total differences. I mean if you combine all the spelling differences of Salome and all the different times that, that things have S's or O's different, it's only a half a page. 